Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of What's Going On. I'm your host, Tom D'Ambra. As always, we are very thankful you take the time from your busy day to view our programs. My friends, we have a tremendous amount of information to go over with you in the short time of this broadcast. Um, so we're going to get right to it. Now, if you remember, about four years ago, we actually uh, read verbatim to you uh, and gave the warning that if you were a veteran using the services of the Veterans Administration, uh, they're going to ask you a series of questions. And it had to do a lot with, uh, do you ever get depressed, uh, mental illness? Uh, do you have someone who uses a power of attorney? Do you have a uh, primary care provider at home for you? Um, and th these type of questions. And uh, we warned you. We said if you check yes to any of these or state that you are depressed or you have uh, some kind of mental, uh, psychological anguish, that not to do this is because it was going to be used to take your gun rights away. Now, this does make sense if you understand what's going on. I'm going to tell you the reason why. What is the number one threat on the threat assessment terrorist watch list by Department of Homeland Security. No, it's not ISIS who just beheaded a Catholic priest after torturing him for three days. They killed him on uh, Good Friday. No, it's not Al-Qaeda or ISIS or ISIL or Al-Nusra, whoever you want to call them this week, that is going around raping Western uh, uh, cultured women throughout Europe. It's not them. The number one threat, and we read this to you verbatim, on the Department of Homeland Security terrorist watch list is who? Veterans. American veterans. So they are definitely doing everything they can to disarm the American people, but particularly veterans. Let us go on with this article. Since December, folks, that's you know, literally only three and a half months, the VA has revoked gun rights for over 260,000 veterans. The Department of Veterans Affairs has long proven that bureaucracy and medical care are incompatible. It's bad enough that the incompetence and waste of the VA has led to the deaths of thousands of veterans in recent years, but apparently they're also treating them like garbage while they are still alive. Since December, the VA started reporting thousands of veterans to the FBI's National Instant Criminal Background Check System, which is responsible for determining whether or not a potential gun buyer is illegally allowed to own a firearm. I thought our rights were unalienable. See, the key word here is legally, not lawfully, legally. Specifically, they've been reporting veterans who have fiduciary trustees to act on their behalf for legal or financial matters. All veterans with this arrangement are being automatically declared, quote unquote, mentally defective according to guns.com. Now, if you go to guns.com, they really break this down. And are having their Second Amendment rights revoked. Over the past three months alone, the VA has reported over 260,000 veterans to the NICS, which now accounts for 99% of all mentally defective claims to the database. Of course, not all veterans with fiduciary trustees are a danger to themselves or others. And unfortunately, the VA hasn't bothered to investigate any of these individuals to see if they should be reported. And Senator Chuck Grassley of Iowa has been questioning the VA on this matter in hopes to put it to a stop. I doubt very much. Never mind, folks, that the VA cannot take care of the veterans. They are now used as a reporting entity to... Uh, take the rights away from veterans. And again, this makes perfect sense. Who is the number one threat on the D Department of Homeland Security terrorist watch list? Veterans. So this makes perfect sense when you understand what is going on. Okay, real quick, let's jump to another matter. And I'm hoping some of you had seen this. Of course, you didn't hear this on the mainstream media. A top German journalist admits mainstream media is completely fake. We all lie for the CIA. Uh, this is at the website Zero Hedge, done by Tyler Durden, uh, with, with the increasing propaganda wars. 
Uh, anyway, I don't have time to do the whole article already, but uh, recently he did an interview with RT News, and this is what his quote is. I've been a journalist for about 25 years, and I was educated to lie, to betray, and not tell the truth to the public. Now, I want to read that to you again. I have been a journalist for about 25 years, and I was educated to lie, to betray, and not tell the truth to the public. He got this statement is quite lengthy, um, but anyway, uh, he, he's talking about German and American media, tries to bring war to the people in Europe, to bring war to Russia, at this point of no return, and I am going to stand up and say it is not right what I have done for the past 25 years, to manipulate people, to make propaganda against Russia, and it, it is not right what my colleagues do and have have done in the past because they are bribed to betray the people not only in Germany all over Europe and in America this gentleman's name by the way if you want wish to look this up is Dr. Ulfkot it's U L F K O T T E and he is not the only person to make these claims as multiple reporters have now uh, done in the same and this kind of truthfulness is something that the world needs more of I totally agree with that uh, another great example of this, my friends, uh, is the whistleblower reporter is an investigative journalist, a former, C former, former CBC News reporter, Cheryl Atkinson. Uh, she actually talked about uh, fake grassroots movements funded by political, corporate, or other social special interest, very effectively manipulating and distort media messages and information. Another great example is Amber Lyon, a three-time Emmy Award-winning journalist who said that they are are routinely paid by the U.S. government and foreign governments to selectively report and even distort information on events. She so also indicated that the government has editorial control over all content. My friends, this goes back to Operation Mockingbird, which we have spoken to you about extensively over the years. Uh, and if you wish, I, I recommend you get on the uh, internet and look up Operation Mockingbird. I don't have the time today to get back into this, but Operation Mockingbird basically was a CIA-based initiative to control the mainstream media. Uh, and also, my friends, it's also what uh, Mr. William Casey, former CIA director, um, of, of, director of the CIA, said about the disinformation program. Uh, uh, we will know when our disinformation program is complete and a success when everything the American people believe is false. Well, my friends, they have acquired uh, their stated goal because uh, if you are getting your information from the mainstream media, uh, or as I call it, the dinosaur media because it is dying, or if you're getting your information from the uh, public indoctrination centers, the public fool centers, you know them as public school systems, then you are completely uh, being indoctrinated with falsehoods. Uh, my friends, it, it's, it's really at the point that the stakes are too high now. Um, and we really are at the point where we need you, need to make an effort to educate yourself, to educate your family and your friends, uh, and more in particular, you ne need to educate the public servants, particularly law enforcement, so we do not have the murderous episodes that have gone on from Randy Weaver and Gordon Call, uh, the Waco massacre, uh, and the recent one, uh, the, the murder of Lavoie Finnegan. You know, I, I've spoken to you many times uh, in the past um, about Mr. John F. Kennedy, uh, how he was the last president and the only president in my lifetime, I was born in 1958, uh, to actually try to fight the bankers. And we all know what happened to him. Uh, he was not killed by Lee Harvey Oswald. Um, and I, I, I think, I know I had mentioned to you numerous times, I invite you to go on the internet and watch the documentary uh, JFK to 911, Everything is Rich Man's Tricks. It is just a phenomenal, phenomenal documentary, and it will really educate you on the evidence and the happenings of the day uh, that JFK was assassinated uh, in Dallas, Texas. The other thing I'd like to uh, mention is a, a quote that 
Mr. Kennedy said right before his assassination. And what he said to the American people was this. He said that those that make peaceful revolution impossible make violent revolution inevitable. Well, my friends, that is basically where we are. We are at the point that, number one, there is an awakening taking place in this country. As Brigno Zabrinsky said, there is a political awakening taking place in the world that the world has never witnessed in its history. So there is a reason why your borders are wide open, but we have this big terrorist threat. There is a reason why the borders are wide open with this big terrorist threat, but yet you're prodded, assessed, um, and inspected to travel in your own country. There is a reason why, as we read to you last week, um, that this Muslim, uh, Wahhabiist Muslims, not all Muslims, just the Wahhabiist Muslims, which are a very violent and extreme sect of uh, Islam, basically all have been financed from the banks of London and New York all the way back, my friends, to the Belfort Agreement of 1917, literally. And I know we've done a lot of uh, broadcast on the financing of the bankers, of all the mass murderers of the, of the world, Pol Pot, Hitler, uh, Stalin, Lenin, all the communist revolutions were financed, my friends, by international bankers. But now we find ourselves where we have true Americans true American patriots, uh, people who are educated, people who have the courage, which is lacking in this country tremendously, to stand up um, against this murderous corporation, insolvent corporation, USA Inc. and all of their entities. The gentleman that you see behind me is Lavoy Finnegan. Now, Lavoy Finnegan uh, was part of the Clive and Bundy Ranch uh, standoff where they would not allow the BLM to go in. Uh, and basically take uh, the uh, Clive and Bundy's land. Uh, the BLM did take their cattle. The BLM did uh, slaughter uh, mercilessly uh, a lot of their cattle and left them out in, uh, left them out in the range just to, to rot. But Lavoy Finnegan was a very educated man, and the people that he was associated with are very educated about who is in control of this insolvent corporation, USA Inc., who owns your land, who you bonded your children to, why there is no money system in this country anymore, why you do not own anything, why you have certificates of title and not a loyal title for any of your possessions, uh, and who is giving the marching orders and financing all of these uh, entities to create chaos. Uh, such as ISIL, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Al-Nusra, all of them are being financed by the United States government, every single one of them. As a matter of fact, uh, General uh, Michael Flynn, uh, we reported this to you some months ago when he came out and said, uh, and now he's in charge of the DIA. This guy is, the DIA, my friends, is the CIA of the military. All the information that is, is gathered throughout the military goes to the DIA to be siphoned and put in proportion to its, its uh, expectancy, how, how, you know, how much we need to work on this, this can wait, and so forth. And he said, and I quote, this is the guy in charge of the DIA, Major, uh, General Michael Flynn, that the Obama administration funded, supplied, and trained ISIS. There you go. Says it right there. You think that guy would know. This is where your tax dollars are going, my friends. Never mind the veterans are dying from supposed medical care. Never mind the veterans are being disarmed through the VA, as we just read to you. Now and have been for many years, financing the enemies of these guys that are killing American soldiers, Marines, sailors, airmen, and Coast Guardsmen. Now, Lavoy Finnegan made a stand. Lavoy Finnegan was murdered. And I want to get into a reading here. This is from uh, James White, Northwest Liberty News. 
And I'm just going to read this verbatim to you. The murder of Lavoy Finnegan is a criminal conspiracy. I am not normally one to make predictions, but if I had to make one about the criminal conspiracy surrounding the murder of Lavoy Finnegan, I would have to predict that the institutional corruption within Oregon is soon to be openly exposed, and this is no small matter, since the corruption appears to have reached all the way to the highest levels of government. Totally agree. And it's not just Oregon, my friends. You got to understand, the states are insolvent, subordinate corporations to the parent federal insolvent corporation, USA Inc. Understand that. And we've gone over that. If you know, folks, if you do not know the, these, these are basic things I'm talking about. And if you do not know that the United States government is an insolvent corporation answering to its creditors, then understand something. You're ignorant. I didn't say stupid. You are ignorant of fact. You need to start studying. You need to absorb knowledge. You need to seek truth. As recently reported in Northwest Liberty News, Peter Sinelli and, and Joseph O'Shaughnessy have filed similar pretrial discovery requests that should certainly make all of those involved in the criminal conspiracy that killed Lavoie Finnegan a bit nervous. On the heels of the motions outlined above, Shauna Cox has filed a criminal countersuit against all the people involved in the criminal conspiracy, including Governor Kate Brown. I have included a portion of the official court document below. Now, my friends, th when I went to the website, I don't have time to read all of it in the full hour. The state, but listen to who she's going, who she's exposing. The state, federal, uh, state and federal bar association members who committed crimes against the Hammond family and myself, known to me at this time, are Judge Grassity, Senator Cliff Benz, Harney County Prosecutor Tim Calhoun, Governor Kate Brown, U.S. Prosecutors Dwight Holton, uh, Kirk Engel, Kelly Zeusman, S. Amanda Marshall, Judge Hogan, and Judge Ann Aiken. My friends, all of these people a part of the Bar Association. All of them. What's the Bar Association? The Bar Association is the British Accreditation Registry. That's why all of these attorneys, to atone, the base of the word attorney is atone, to separate one from one's property, is the reason why they're called esquires, is because esquire is a title of British nobility. They all belong to the private corporation. Our courts are not run by the people. Every judge you go in front, every magistrate, every administrator is a member of a foreign guild called the British Accreditation Registry, and that's why they're called Esquires. They are not answering to common law. They are following the dictates of commercial law, law merchantile. And we all know we had common law in this country at one time, and what took place? And we've got into this. March 9th, 1933, the law system changed in this country. It went from common law, where if you did not encroach or do harm to someone physically and or their property, the law had no dealings with you. Doesn't work that way anymore, does it? Now we have agencies who create laws. Now we have private banks outside of the legislative halls of Congress that create law. Now we have a CEO of an insolvent corporation called Barry Satoro. I have a phone. I have a pen. I create law. Remember that statement? This is why she's going after all these people. Harney County public officials are, who committed crimes against the Hammond family and myself by omissions and misprison of felonies are Sheriff David Ward and FBI Special Agent Catherine Armstrong. Additional affirmative defense I am reserving include the lack of jurisdiction, the lack of venue. The court is attempting to prosecute me in an Article 4 court, and I am not an Article 3 court. Excuse me, and not in an Article 3 court. I object to the court continuing to attempt to identify me as a subject of the Corporation United States of America, USA Inc. I ask the court to cease and desist and acknowledge that I am a sovereign citizen with the state and federal constitutional rights and protections of common law. See, that's where the venue comes in. I am requesting a fact-finding hearing to identify the status of the court itself and my status with the court. 
restriction of jurisdictional uh, judicial powers, selective prosecution, unequal protections of the laws and the government, the people, omissions and misprison of felony by state and federal agents, officials, and employees, subversive activities against our state and our federal constitutional form of government, malicious prosecution, unlawful detainment and seizure, RICO, and racketeering efforts organized against me, us, and the Hammonds and others. The constitutional right of the militia to assemble against subversive attacks against the Constitution of the United States, that should say for, and with the people of these United States, the U being small. My right to assemble was interfered with. My freedom of speech was interfered with. Criminal negligence. Organized attempted execution and murder of a witness and informant. Organized execution and murder of my co-witness and co-informant. Foreign agents operating subversively within these United States, including but not limited to state and federal bar associations. IMF agents and Blackstone mercenaries. That's right. There was private mercenaries at this event. Now, you may be asking, gee, why is, why is she exposing in, uh, International Monetary Fund agents? I'm going to tell you why. Because it's the International Monetary Fund that is giving the marching orders to all the activities of the Insolvent Corporation USA, Inc. My friends, we've gone over this so many times, it's very basic. If you... If you are the debtor and someone else is the creditor, who are you going to be answering to? You're going to answer to the creditor. And it's the creditor, it's the international bankers that are running the show. And she's exposing that. And she's educated enough to understand this. Okay, now I don't have time to get into all of this, but 18 U.S.C. sections 3, 4, 13, 201, 3, 210, 211, 241, 242, 371, 641, 654, 662, 1001, 1016, 1018, 1341, 1349, 1512, 1513, 1519, 1621, 1623, 1951, 1956, 1957, 1962, 1964, 2071, 18, U.S. Chapter 96, RICO, false representation concerning title, criminal sabotage, assemblage of sabotage, fraudulent removal of property, intent to defraud, malicious prosecution, su supervisive activities made felon, conviction of public office of forfeits trust. Oh, that's something we need to get into someday. That is something, we you know something, my friends, we got to, Bill and Stanley, please make a mental note for me, because we got to get into that one day. Okay. Um, and then we, what's going to go on? Conviction of public officers and Fort Fitch Trust. We have got to get into the trust and why the sheriffs are the number one superior position uh, of law enforcement in the country. The culpability, complicity, assault in first, second, and third degrees, coercion, harassment, theft, robbery, forgery, duress, bribery, training in public office, training in special influence, flavor of duty of public officer, intimidating a witness, tampering with a witness, tampering with a physical evidence, rendering criminal assistance, compounding abuse of office, organized crime, Crime, leading organized crime, controlling enterprise of reality, conspiracy, attempt, criminal profiting, money laundering. Oh, money laundering. We're going to get into that, folks. Uh, at some point, we don't have the time today. We're going to make you understand how the Clintons are involved with this whole thing. Uh, we did talk to you about Uranium One, the deal that the Clinton Foundation had made. Uh, but anyway, let's go on. Uh, oath of admission, adverse possession under claim and color of title and rights of survivors and witnesses, right of effective counsel, judicial officer defined when disqualified. So all of these things that I just read to you real quick are going to be brought forth, and I'm sure the courts are going to do all they can to not pursue this. Um, unfortunately, my friends, I do not have uh, the time now. Uh, this is Lavoie Finnegan with his family. Um, and I do not have the time, unfortunately, to read from you the American Free Press. I promise you I will do it next week. Headline, this is the quote from his wife. My husband was murdered. Uh, and this article is quite deep, and, and unfortunately I do not have time to get into it, but we're going to get into the reasons why uh, Lavoie Finnegan 
uh, was murdered. And I hope, I hope we asked you all to get on the internet. Uh, we asked you to please to go ahead uh, and look at the footage, look at the, the video. Now you can see the video on the internet from the uh, cell phone of uh, Shauna Cox. Uh, and you can plainly see that before any of them got out of the vehicle, when they first pulled over, they were being shot at. You can plainly see that none of them had any arms on them. Uh, you can plainly see that Lavoy Finnegan had his hands up the entire time that he was gunned down. Uh, you can see the bullets hitting the glass. You can hear them hitting the vehicles. And uh, these people are doing nothing uh, as any sense of a threat uh, against the law enforcement that murdered and gunned these people down. The private mercenaries, I you know I said this in the very beginning. In the very beginning when this happened, I said, we do not know who was actually pulling triggers at this event. And now we find out there were private mercenaries that were involved with this. We know the FBI was involved with this. We know the Oregon State Police were involved with this. And we don't know if there were any foreigners involved with this. And how do we know? Because the Oregon State Police and the FBI will not release the names of the individuals that were there. What happened to transparency? Anyway, our prayers go out to the family of Lavoie. And I will tell you there are four attorneys from four different states that are involved with this lawsuit. And uh, Godspeed is all I can say. I hope you expose all the criminals of, of this. And, and let's not forget about Shauna Cox's brother because they had taken all, the, not all, there wasn't really that many by my standards, they, they had taken the guns that were in Shauna, by orders of the FBI, they had taken the guns that were in Shauna Cox's house and they put them into a warehouse that was owned by her brother. Her brother put the guns in the warehouse, was working on a tractor uh, that was there, and then mysteriously, the building blew up and Shauna Cox's brother was killed and the building just mysteriously blew up. That is another story for another day. Okay, my friends, let us continue. As you know, I am a big fan of Paul Craig Roberts, former Assistant Secretary of the Treasury. This man has been involved inside the realms of governments for decades. Uh, he understands what's going on, and I want to read his recent uh, letter to the American people for you. Uh, I happen to take this from Greg Hunter's website, usawatchdog.com, and this was released this past Sunday. Former Assistant Secretary in the Reagan administration, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, contends it is no accident why bankers do not get jail time for constantly committing fraud by stealing documents and committing fraudulent criminal insider trading and market manipulations. Because I'll tell you why right now. It's the just us system. Not the just is, the just us system. You know, it's interesting. I, I, I read yesterday, big mainstream media, that the FBI is going to talk to Hillary Clinton about, the, about using her private server for, you know, top secret communications. Wait a minute. This has been going on for five months? And you haven't even talked to her yet? <laughs> what would happen to you if you didn't cross your T's and dot your I's with a simple IRS form? You think they would talk to you within five months? I guarantee it. It's the just us system. Let us continue. Dr. Roberts explains, looking at Edward Snowden and Julian Assange, they claim they stole documents, and we are determined to destroy them. One of them is hiding out in Russia, and one of them is hiding out in the Ecuadorian embassy in London. This again shows the immunity of the banks. They are not held accountable because, listen to his words, they are in control. Who controls the Fed? Who controls the Treasury? Where do all the Treasury secretaries come from? They come from the big New York banks. Look at the financial regulatory agencies that are supposed to be regulating the banks. They are filled with executives from the banks. The banks control the government. There isn't a government. There's the banks. We have the entire economic policy of the United States concentrating on saving five banks 
Yet we had over 10 million Americans who lost their homes and nothing was done for them, but the five banks are saved. And the 2016 election, Dr. Roberts says, the United States is controlled by powerful private interest groups, and these groups don't trust outsiders because they don't have the hooks in them. How would they have their hooks in Trump? He's a billionaire. He doesn't need their money. They can't tell Trump, hey, look, we're going to give you $153 million in speaking fees like we did to Hillary Clinton. He doesn't care. He doesn't need $153 million. He's got billions. So they can't control him. And it's the same for Bernie Sanders, even though he's a socialist Democratic senator. He is not really part of the Washington Democratic establishment. What the establishment is interested in doing is to control the parties. They would much rather keep control of the party than to win an election if it means they lose control to an outsider. Even if Trump is, was permitted to be president, and I don't think he will be permitted, I think they will do the same thing that they did to Ron Paul. They just won't recognize his delegates. The neoconservatives are already organizing a way to block Trump when he wins the nomination. This is an oligarchy. The oligarchy pro protects itself and hides behind the elections, but it controls all the candidates. This time, it has been able to control all the candidates because the American, excuse me, this time it has not been able to control all the candidates because the American people are finally catching on that neither political party represents them. Okay, my friends, I'm going to stop here for the sake of time uh, with regards to Mr. Roberts. And I know uh, he's just a phenomenal, courageous, very articulate, says it straight forth, intelligent, intelligent man. Now, I don't have a lot of time left to read all this to you, but what I want to read to you is the new anti-hoarding laws. That's right. You are not allowed to have certain things. Now, you may ask yourself, oh, come on, Tom, anti-hoarding laws? Folks, I'm going to read these verbatim to you, and there's so many of them, I will not have time to read uh, all 10 pages of this, actually eight pages of documentation, that I will not be able to have time to read all of this to you. But I want you to understand something. This is how they stole your gold and silver for the bankers back in 1933, by passing anti-hoarding laws. You, want, you weren't a good American being frugal, saving your money, saving your gold and silver for the wealth of your nation and your family. You were bad, bad people. We had to slap your wrist. We had to take all your gold and silver because, after all, the international bankers needed it. And so we put it in a facade place called Fort Knox, and we're going to put it away, see, and we're going to make you believe the Federal Reserve is part of the federal government when it's not, which we've gone through many times. And we're going to make you believe that there's a reserve we're going to acquire when there's not. It's all a facade. We showed you a picture a couple of weeks ago with Vladimir Putin demonstrating to the world Russia's gold is in their hands. Yet, when's the last time the Americans saw their gold that was taken from them? They have not. So, don't think that they're putting this down, my friends, just to create more bureaucracy. They are doing this because there is a plan to take everything you own and remember something. Senate Document 43 clearly states that all property is in the state and subordinate to the necessities of the state. All property. That's why you don't own anything. Let us go on. This is from the Modern Survival blog. And I took some of this also when I get into the actual laws. Uh, I took some of this from the congressional record. And I'm not going to read the pretext to it, uh, but basically right now, I'm just going to tell you right now that um, this is federal, state, local, national guard, and even the military are all under these provisions. National Defense Resource Preparedness. 
Section 801, definitions. In, in addition to the definitions in Section 702 of this Act, 50 U.S.C., Appropriations 2152, the following definitions apply throughout this order. Now, these are all the things that they can take. Civil transportation includes, listen to this, movement of persons and or property by all modes of transportation in interstate, intrastate, or foreign commerce within these United States, its territories and possessions, and the District of Columbia, and related public storage and warehousing, ports, services, equipment, facilities, such as transportation carrier shop, all repair facilities, all civil transportation, which also includes uh, direction, control, and coordination of transportation cap capacities regardless of ownership. Civil transportation shall not include transportation owned or controlled by the Department of Defense. The Department of Defense's use of petroleum or gas pipelines, coal slurry pipelines. So in other words, the government can take everything that's yours, but you can't touch the Department of Defense stuff. Why? Because that's going to be used against you to take your stuff. Energy. Energy means all forms of energy, including any and all. Petroleum-based products, gas, both natural and manufactured, electricity, solid fuels to include all forms of coal, coke, coal chemicals, coal liquefaction, wood, and coal gasification. Any solar, wind, or other types of renewable energy. Atomic energy, or the production thereof. Conservation, use, control, and distribution, including all pipelines otherwise necessary for all of these forms of energy. My friends, do you remember when we read to you uh, uh, silent weapons for quiet wars, and we defined energy. What was energy? Your sweat equity. All forms of energy. C, farm equipment means any and all equipment, machinery, repairs, parts manufactured for use of any farms in connection with the production or preparation for markets of use of any food resources, private or corporate. You got a lawnmower to cut your farm? You got a rototiller to rototill your garden? It's all right here. Bye bye. Fertilizer means any and all product, a combination of products that contain one or more elements of nitrogen, phosphorus, or potassium for use as a plant nutrient. Got some manure hanging around? Food resources means any and all commodities and products, simple, mixed, or compound, or complements to such commodities or products that are capable of being ingested or digested either by human beings or any animals, irrespective of other uses to which such commodities or products may be also be put to other uses at all stages of processing from the raw commodity to the products therein, venerable form for human or animal consumption. Food resources also means any potable water packaged in any marketable containers, all starches, all sugars, all vegetable and animal, or marine fats, oil, seed, cotton, hemp, flaxseed, fiber. Unbelievable. Food resources facilities means any plants, any machinery, vehicles, including all farm machinery, private and commercial, and other facilities required for the production, processing, distribution, or storage, and including cold storage of any food resources for the domestic distribution of farm equipment and fertilizer. Functions include any power, duties, energy, authority, responsibilities, or discretions. Now, folks, understand why they, they keep adding, you know, they, they've got here, including any powers, any duties, any energies, any authority, any responsibilities, any discretion. Because when they're talking about here, they're covering the mechanical things, and then they're talking about your sweat equity, energy. Head of each agency shall engage in procurement for the national defense. And this means the heads of the departments of the state, 
the Just Us system, the Interior, the Homeland Security, the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, the Central Intelligence Agency, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, the General Services Administration, and all other agencies with the authority delegated under Section 201 of this order. Health resources means drugs, any and all biological products. Can you say medicinal herbs? Make medical devices, materials, facilities, health supplies, services, and equipment required to diagnose, mitigate, or prevent the impairment of, improve, treat, cure, or restore the physical or mental health conditions of any population. National defense means programs for the military in any energy production or construction, military or critical infrastructure assistance to any foreign nation. Homeland security, stockpiling, space, and any directly related activity. Such terms include emergency preparedness activities pursuant to Title VI of the Robert T. Stafford Disaster Relief and Emergency Assistance Act 42 USC 5195 and critical infrastructure protection and restoration. My friends, what they're telling you right there, just as they did before, during, and after World War II, take any of your possessions and transport them to any foreign nation, including your sweat equity. That means you can go bye-bye. Offsets means compensation practices required as a condition of the purchase of either the government or the government or commercial sales of defense articles. All the defense services as defined by the Arms Export Control Act 22 U.S.C. 2751 and the International Traffic and Arms Regulations 22 CFR 120.1 and 130.17. So who's going to get compensated here? Government to government or commercial sales of defense articles? Are you going to get compensated? No. You're going to get taken. The defense contractors and the government are going to get compensated. There is nothing in here about offset compensation to talk about private property, private energy, private mechanics, private food storage, private medical supplies, private water, nothing. The only people that are going to be compensated according to this right here from the congressional record is, quote unquote, government to government agencies or commercial sales of defense articles. So the big guys are going to get paid. Oh, and by the way, who do you think are going to pay the taxes to make sure these government to government entities and these defense contractors are going to get paid? You are. It's very simple. Let us continue. Special priorities assistance means actions by resource departments to assist with expediating deliveries, placing rated orders, locating suppliers, resolving production or delivery conflicts between various rated orders, addressing problems that arise in the fulfillment of a rated order or other action authorized by a delegated agency, and determining the validity of rated orders. In other words, they've given themselves prioritizing power to see what they're going to come take from you first. And then we'll be back later to take what we need later. Strategic and critical materials means including energy. You see how that word keeps coming up, friends? And what was the definition of energy, again, through the Silent Weapons Quiet Wars document? You. Your, as I call it, sweat equity. That would be needed to supply the military and industrial needs. Essential civilians of the United States during a national emergency, or two, they are not found or produced in the United States in sufficient quantities to meet such needs and are vulnerable to determination or reduction of the availability of the material. So what are they telling you here? That your energy 
is going to be needed to supply the military and industrial components of the United States during a national emergency. My friends, we're in numerous states of declared national emergency, and we have been since March 9, 1933. Let us continue. That, that is just unbelievable. Actually, it's not unbelievable. When you understand what the end game is and where they're going, it actually makes a tremendous amount of sense. Let us continue. Water resources means all usable water from all sources, private and public, within the jurisdiction of these United States that will be managed, controlled, and allocated to meet emergency requirements Got a private well? Well, excuse me. You have a perceived private well? You don't own the land. The bankers do. You don't have water rights. The bankers do. As a matter of fact, remember we read to you about three years ago how the UN wanted to tax, put meters, on every single private and public water source in this country so they could tax and regulate it? Folks, I'm not even done here. I've only got eight minutes and I've got three more pages to read to you verbatim how they have given themselves the power and permission to take every single thing you have that you think is yours, including your children, including your sweat equity, everything. And I'm not going to have the time to finish it. Now, I think what we can do is I could tell you right now, if you, if you want, because I, I have to cut this short, I'm sorry. We only, you know, folks, it's very difficult to cram so much information in, in here in, in less than an hour. But what I would recommend you do is go to section 2072, 2072, and punch this up. And if, if you, actually, I gotta back up a little bit. Go to the 1950s War and National Defense Production Act, okay? That'll take you through all these different titles and things you gotta go through. Go to that and then go to section 2072, which is an upgrade from that. But that'll, that'll save you having a, run around the block, it'll take you right to the door you need to go to. Okay. Now, I'm going to read this real quick. Uh, you, this is U.S. Code Title 50, War and National Defense, uh, and also from Title 50, uh, Appendix War and National Defense, Def, uh, Defense Production Act. Now, listen to this. This is part of Section 2072. Hoarding of designated scarce materials. In order to prevent hoarding, no person shall accumulate in excess of the reasonable demands of business, personal, or home consumption, or for the purposes of resale at the price and index of prevailing market prices. Materials have been designated by the president as scarce materials, or materials of supply of which would be threatened by such accumulation. The president shall order published in the Federal Register, and in such other manner as he may deem appropriate and necessary, every designation of materials, the accumulation of which is unlawful in any withdrawal of such designation. What are they telling you in, in bureaucratic legalese here? That the President of the United States, the CEO of the Insolvent Corporation is going to tell you what he deems you need. Now, you notice they don't talk about they talk about regional demands of business and personal home consumption and the purpose and the reasonable resale. So I guess $400 toilet seats for the Air Force is a reasonable demand. After all, they didn't stop that from happening. I guess $122 hammers for the Navy is 
reasonable resale. But for you, according to the Department of Homeland Security, you are only allowed, as we read verbatim to you some time ago, seven days worth of food for your house and anything after that, you are on the terrorist watch list. It used to be 30. Then they brought it down to 10. Now it's seven. And there is actually talk of making it three days worth of food that you're legally allowed to store. Again, the laws are met to keep the little people little. It is the just us system, my friends. I have three more pages of laws and regulations to read to you of you bad people who are hoarding. It was bad when we were hoarding your gold and silver. We had to give that to the international bankers. My friends, don't laugh at this. They are going to use this. There is a reason why they are putting this into law. Because they're going to use it. There is a major crisis coming to this nation. It's, uh, you know what, my friends? See, people think of crisis, they think of just this one big event. No, 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 no. When you are implementing crises, you do it in incremental steps. First you get your foot in the door, then you slowly but surely open that door so the people or the victims you are about to portray on do not become suspicious of what you're doing. You get it all set up, logistically, psychologically, and then you have your, as Albert Pike called, culmination crises, like 9-11 which we know was a 100% complete inside job. Even people in the government, I mean, so many German defense, foreign defense ministers, so many people have come out. Paul Craig Roberts, so many, that 9-11 was an inside job done by the Israeli Mossad and rogue elements of the United States government. Well, the entire United States government, my friends, is rogue. It's an insolvent corporation answering to bankers. And I've still got three more pages to read to you how they have given themselves permission through the color of law to take every single thing you own, including your children. Don't think it's not going to happen. You know, not even Hitler put this stuff in writing. Not even Hitler. And, and you're sitting there, and you're either saying to yourself, this guy is out of his mind, and he printed this up on himself, or you're coming to the understanding, my friends, that the United States government is not a benevolent organization looking out for your well-being. Go ask the women and children at Waco. Have a conversation with Randy Weaver, as we have. Talk to the family of Lavoie Finnegan. You will see the reality of where the government is, using private mercenaries to murder American citizens as they did in Oregon. You will see the corruption of the just us system, the court system that is controlled by the British Accreditation Registry, a foreign guild. You will then understand why we have commercial law and they have done away with common law. You will understand why you bonded your children through an entity called the birth certificate. And then you will come to a really deep understanding why you have certificate of titles issued to you by the state and not a loyal title granted to you through ownership. You will understand why there is no gold or silver or intrinsic valued commodity backing your medium of exchange. And please take note, I did not say money, because according to Black's Law Dictionary, as we've read to you many times, money does not encompass debt. What is a note, my friends? A note is an acknowledgment of debt. 
you will understand why you are regulated, assessed, inspected to travel in your own nation because of a terrorist threat that was a complete false flag, yet our borders are wide open and they are bringing the enemy here, the Wahhabist, extremist, Islamic. Do you know, uh, it, was, it was an article, a report from the Border Patrol that just under 80% of all the migrants that are coming here, the Islamic migrants that are coming here are of, and I quote unquote, military age males. There's a reason for that. And they sold it to you as the children, didn't they? My friends, we are very thankful you take the time from your busy day to view our program. We know they have you running around like the rat in the wheel. We ask you to seek truth, to obtain knowledge, to manifest kindness to your fellow man. And we always close in reminding you that your government is your responsibility. We thank you for watching. Read between the lines. Got to read. Got to read between the lines. Well, the truth is very simple. Very hard to find.